All right, hey everybody, this is Ian with Vodacycling, and I have a product discussion today. I don't want to call it a product review because I'm not an expert in doing reviews for technology or anything like that. I just happen to love motorcycling, and uh, this is one of the gears or accessories or technology that I love to use with my motorcycle. I recently just got this for my birthday. It is the new uh, Senna 20S Bluetooth communication system. It is a dual pack. Um, I think this was for like $420 for a dual pack, and I think if you buy it separately, it's $210 or $220 each uh, headset. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to talk about, about it from a consumer standpoint. I'm going to go over what's in the box. There's a lot in this box. Uh, if you want to go and see the details, the un unboxing, I do have a video of that, but I'm not going to go in details for each component. I just want to show you what comes in the box, that way you get an idea what comes with it. I'm going to talk about using it with my phone, uh, how that experience was. I'm going to talk about how I, um, when I was using it to talk to my passenger, um, how was that experience, and then I also got some feedback from the passenger and how I got her experience as well. Um, and then I'm going to talk about how it was used with the GoPro, um, and then, you know, just my final thoughts on the devices themselves. All right, so let's start with the box. The box is pretty simple, just a cardboard box, nothing fancy. The packaging isn't luxurious like if you were to buy a uh, uh, Swiss watch or um, some expensive headphones or anything like that. Um, it's very simple, just a cardboard box, lift it up. Even the design is simple, just says 20S and Senna on the outside. We have instruction manuals in here. Uh, I do use the quick guide, it was very helpful. Um, I, I recommend anyone who's gonna buy this, uh, definitely use this quick guide um, along with the, I've used this instruction manual num numerous times. It's just that this particular system just has so many functions, it's really hard not to read this when you're trying to use it. Okay, um, and then inside is going to be the, um, the plastic mold, or I'm not sure what this is called, this tray, this plastic tray, that holds all the components. So these are where the speakers were, and all the wiring and the microphone goes right in here. And this is the actual device itself. This is one of the devices. The other one's on my helmet already. This is my passenger's um, device. I just put it in here so you can kind of see, you know, how it fits in there. Uh, let's put that aside for one second. I'll go back to that in a minute. And then underneath, all of that is where um, really all of your components are and there is a lot of it. Let me lift it up just a little bit here so you can kind of see um, what it is I'm talking about. Um, so let me open this up here and we'll take a look inside. Hopefully this won't be too bad. It comes with everything comes in two so because there's two headsets there's uh, I think there's like four of these ones here two of those and uh, only one, I think there's two car chargers as well. So there's your two car chargers or the cigarette lighter charger. I know it's not just a car. Some motorcycles have that as well. I'm going to try to go these, these, through these very quick. I'm not going to go in detail uh, just to give you an idea what's in it. So just to make the video complete, I'm trying to stay the, under 20 minutes with these. These are extra, extra ear pads. So if you want to, um, if your helmet has the ear pad canal or ear pad, indentation too far in and you want to um, put it so that it's closer to your ears um, then you can use these. I didn't use them because they were fine in my helmet and as you can see they come in, in pairs um, and these are the microphones look like. I, I put one of the on and I ripped it off because I was a hulk about it but anyway so this is what uh, one of the microphones look like so they you know comes in different pairs like that. You have more clips which I'm not entirely sure what all these clips are for um, but there's lots of them. I think this clip is for if you need to clip the adapter to hold the headset on the outside of the helmet. If you can't, uh, I'll show you that what I mean by that later. Um, so then here's another clip. Yeah, so everything's in double. This is a 2.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter wire. Um, and so that's what that is, and there's two of those. And this is a different microphone. This is the um, wire boom mic. So it's got a little bit of wire, but then the other end is still flexible. And I think this is what was originally installed on the headset when it came out of the box. So here's a, you know, th there's double of that and there's more wind socks. Um, so yeah, so that, it, the, the whole entire set does come with a lot and I'm very impressed with that. It's got little stickers, little Velcro 3M. 
to attach your microphone so that it stays put inside your helmet. All right, so let's put all that back in the box and we're gonna move on to the next thing, which I think is really important. Uh, when I look at product reviews, I like to look closely at the product itself. So I'm just gonna kind of go a quick overview of that right here for you so you can kind of see um, really ultimately, you know, what this product is, um, how it compares to, to other products. Uh, this is the first time I've owned a, a Bluetooth set like this, so I'm just going to try and go over it as much as I can here. Uh, the Jaguar itself is very rubbery. It, it's not like complete rubbery, but it feels rubbery. It feels solid, so you can pretty much feel it with your leather gloves very well. And when you roll it, it clicks, so you can, it has lower notches, so you can actually feel that with your dexterity even through the leather gloves. This button itself does push and it does click. It makes a nice click and that to help with that dexterity. Just to give you the sound right there. This LED light right here really functions as a way of communicating with you uh, to toggle through the different functions when you press this button um, or this phone button back here. This button really just tells you this light will turn green, yellow, red, it'll flash red, it'll flash blue, and that really just tells you what function it's on. So that's what that light is for. Um, for the rules and tutorial how to use this, Senna has a really great, great videos on tutorials on how to use this. So one of my favorite things th that this can do is voice command. If you double tap this, it actually will allow you to command pretty much anything, um, whether it's your phone, your uh, trying to connect with one of the intercoms, if you have them numbered um, already, then you can you certainly voice command through tapping this. So it's a very neat feature. So moving on from there, uh, we're going to go underneath it. This part right here connects to the adapter, which I will show you later, on the side of your helmet. This allows for sound and voice recognition from the microphone into this unit, and then it allows for the sound in, from the unit into your speakers. Very self-explanatory. On the back of that, this go, this little area right here clamps right into the adapter itself to hold um, this unit to the adapter. And right above that is the antenna for the FM radio. In order to open this, you just take this little notch right here, and you can do this with a leather glove. I've tried this numerous times. Just push it out away from the unit itself and let go, and it will spring up for you. And then in order to close it, just press it down. And when you hear that click, it is uh, ready to go and it is closed. All right. So there you go there. I am trying my hardest to get this thing zoomed for you so that you're not sitting here blurry by the end of this video. And it's not working out very well. All right. Um, and then that's pretty much the uh, front and the back of the unit. Uh, in the, the back side right here, there is a rubber button. This allows you to... It actually does have a click and it's rubberized. It allows you to um, turn and basically make phone calls. To press it to accept the phone call, press it to end the phone call. If you press it twice, you can tell it to speed dial. And then this unit itself can actually memorize three phone numbers, uh, speed dial one, two, and three. And then you can also use this to, communi to communicate with your phone and tell your phone to dial the last number or speed dial into the speed dial of the phone itself. And then last but not least is this little adapter right here is where you hook your USB to charge it and also to upgrade any firmware that is needed for this unit. The firmware itself can be upgraded, um, updated via the app, the Senna app on your Android phone or your, um, I don't know if iPhone has it, I think it does, but uh, I know Android does have it. So there is um, this right here. So that's just a quick overview of the unit itself. Uh, last but not least, it's it's actually, it looks bulky, but it's actually very light. Again, I don't have something to compare this to because I've never owned one, but to me, it's really light. However, when you do put on your helmet, anytime you put something on your head, you will notice the weight because it is pretty hefty. It's not as thin as the old Senna systems or the some of the Scala systems um, or the Cardo Scala rider systems. So it is... You know, it is pretty thick, but, you know, I honestly don't mind having this amount of weight on my helmet because I do wear a GoPro, so I don't really notice that much of a huge difference. All right, so that is the unit itself. 
<clears throat> let's move on to talk about using the system with uh, my phone. I have a, oh, I just got a text message here. I have um, an Android phone, very self-explanatory. Any phone with a Bluetooth system is going to work with this perfectly fine. So uh, using the phone, I've used the phone with this device to listen to music. I've used it to make phone calls. Um, I use the app on this phone to pair up some uh, my rider to update this to also set FM state FM radio stations. I've also used it to set speed dial numbers to this. So I use my app for everything. I don't really use the USB that much other than just for charging. Um, so a couple things with the phone. Making phone calls on it is amazing. I cannot believe um, how well I can hear the other person speaking to me very clearly through the speakers. And then um, and then I was on the highway actually going about 60 miles an hour and I was talking to the other person who was on their Bluetooth system in their car and they had about five to ten minutes into the conversation I finally asked them if they knew that I was on a motorcycle and they had no idea. They thought I was at a gas station stopped. Um, at a gas station to make the phone call to them, but actually it turned out I was actually on the highway talking to them and the microphone picked up everything and drowned everything out and they were able to hear me perfectly fine. So that's making phone calls. The music itself, um, I took the advice of Triple X Deadhead and actually turn the uh, used my music player to turn up the bass and I went to bass heavy. Um, when you don't, when you first get the system and you sync it with this and you don't mess with anything with your music player itself, it is god awful. The sound is just god awful if you don't do the bass heavy. Um, it, the, the speakers are like, they sound like they're blowing out in my ears the whole entire time. Like I cannot make out the words or the music itself. So after doing what Triple X Dead had told me, going to my music player and made it bass heavy, it was completely perfect. The speakers are amazingly good once I did that. They're about this thin and uh, unfortunately I don't have it with me to show it to you because it's in my helmet and it's kind of a pain to take it in and out so I didn't take it in and out. But just take my word for it, it's about like a size of a Thin Mint if not thinner. Yeah, it's about the size of a Thin Mint and they work amazing for some helmet speakers. Um, they're not going to give you bass and treble and all that good sound from a car stereo, but it does the job very well on the drive to work. But again, as long as you actually go into your music player and make it uh, and turn the amp to bass heavy, then you, you can listen to the music very well. And the speakers are very loud. They are not... I w I've tested this going 65, 70 on the highway. I know some of you go faster than that. But I have a Harley with loud pipes and I was able to hear the music just fine as if, you know, as if it was just sitting next to me. So that's the phone itself. Um, the rider, I also use, was able to use this to speak with my passenger. Uh, this is her helmet and this is actually hers. Um, and I'll talk about the installation after I speak about the rider. Um, she was actually impressed with it and I was impressed with it because... Uh, when we both turned it on, she spoke with me. I, it was very clear coming through the speakers. Uh, we were both on the bike. There were times that I heard the bike through the speakers because it was coming through her microphone and it was feeding into my speakers. I just turned the volume to middle, the middle of the jog wheel a little bit, uh, and then that sound was minimal at that point. So I was able to listen to the natural sound of the bike more. You might not have this problem if you don't have a loud bike. So that's just to keep that in mind. But as far as road noise, wind noise, any of that, you don't really hear it until the person starts talking. I feel like the system recognizes when a voice is coming through, then it actually feeds the voice into the speakers of the helmet. So she came through very clear and I came through very clear and we didn't have to put it in max. We didn't have to put the wheel on the volume on max to listen to each other. We listened to each other very, very easily. All right, so that's talking with a rider. Um, and syncing with is easy. Again, there's a tutorial on YouTube. You push this button, it will find... Um, whatever unit is open and uh, hers is number one on my list so it'll find number one and try to connect with it and it, it just connects it um, when it was very easy when I did go into the restaurant and I forgot to turn it off it will disconnect on its own from each other and I think the reason why is because it's trying to save battery and because the microphone is on 
in here on the whole time. So therefore, I think it disconnects from each other because it's not recognizing a voice for a short period of time. So that's the rider. The GoPro itself, I did do a sound test. Um, it does such a good job of picking up my voice that it literally drowns everything out. It drowns the whole entire um, bike out. And I, don't, I can barely hear my bike. And my bike is really loud. So to give you an idea how good these speakers are and to give you an idea how good um, it is at capturing the GoPro, the, the sound, into the GoPro, the GoPack right here, um, it does a very good job. And my voice comes through very clear. The only thing I don't like is that my voice is alienated. It doesn't sound like my natural voice as if uh, like the speaker, like the microphone I'm using now. Uh, so my personal own microphone is actually this one right here. And with the help, again, with the help of Triple X Deadhead, I have this furry thing on here. This is a dollar from the Dollar General store and I just cut it into pieces and I taped it on here. I mean, I taped it, but I sewed it on here. I actually did some sewing. Um, and then I actually have some Velcro right here. This, the speaker, the microphone's underneath this. I'm not going to take it off because it's kind of a pain to put it back on. Um, but this Velcro, I put it on here myself so I can attach it to the helmet inside. And then um, the one gripe I have about this Senna system is that my microphone takes a 3.5 mil jack. The Senna right here, Bluetooth, takes a 2.5 mill millimeter jack. So my microphone comes with two wires. I have the 3.5 to the USB because the GoPro 3 Hero 3 Plus takes the USB. And then I have just a regular 3.5 to 3.5 for the old GoPros. So I don't have a 2.5. Now the 2.5 to the 3.5 adapter is not hard to get. As a matter of fact, it comes with the box and I showed you that to you earlier. However, the 2.5 is a right angle going in here. It is a right angle like this. I am unable to find such an adapter on eBay yet. I found one, but I don't know if it's going to work and I'm going to try it, but uh, that is really the problem. So for those of you who have the old Cena or are hoping to have a 3.5 here to work with your old microphones, because I know some of the old, my, my personal microphone works way better than the Cena microphone. This is not going to work because this takes a 2.5 millimeter jack, right angle at that. So that's microphone and GoPro setup. But otherwise, the sound coming into the GoPro is perfect. If you don't care about bike noise, it works flawlessly. The jack wheel I've talked about, I love this jack wheel. The, um, the, the gloves using, using the glove on it is amazing. I really love it. Uh, I'm, I have no gripes about it. Okay, the, my final thoughts is, oh, the last thing I want to talk about is, um, the last thing I want to talk about is installing it on Insulation on the helmet. Insulation for this is not that hard. This helmet is a uh, Nolan N85, very simple helmet, $200 helmet, and I will tell you why, it's two, why the, the price is important in a minute for a helmet. Um, it took me about 10, 15 minutes, and I think the reason why it took me about 10, 15 minutes, or even 15, 20 minutes, is because I've never installed any of these before. For those of you have, who have installed these before, this will be a breeze. So I had to figure out, you know, how to do this, and I was afraid of hurting my helmet, and of course I have OCD, so that's why it took me about 20 minutes. I'm sure most of you who are, have already used this, it's going to only take you like 10 minutes to do it. This helmet was really, really simple. Uh, this class right here is really, really simple. It literally is already pre clamped you just loosen it up and then you put it up the side of the helmet right here clamp it there's ellen wrenches that come in the box screw it in and you're good to go and then you just kind of put the wires you just kind of have feed the wires how you want it these wires right here um, go to the speakers there's two wires here they go to the speakers and this wire goes to the microphone and you're pretty much all set and you just choose the microphone that's recommended for the full phase half phase or um, modular whatever helmet you have now, however, this helmet, which is my personal helmet, took me 45 minutes. And the reason why is because this helmet is $600. And the reason why it's $600 is because the bottom of this, all of this is really tightly packed because it's trying to prevent wind noise. It's giving a tight seal right here, so I'm not having a lot of noise coming through. And it's a very tight, light helmet. However, because it's so tight, this piece right here goes in very, very deep on the side. And the deeper these little pads go in, the harder it is to actually put this in and put it back together. So the installation itself is difficult not because of the, the unit itself, but it's difficult because of the helmet. So that's just to keep in mind. Um, 
If your helmet is difficult because it's got a lot of functionality and a lot of luxurious things to it, it might be difficult and it's not because of the units, so keep that in mind. All right, this is Team with Motorcycling. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for so much for watching.